This first unit of the book focuses on the foundations of interpersonal communication. We really struggled with where to start because in many ways it's hard to break the parts of the interpersonal communication process into segments and say that any one part is more important or foundational than any other part. We focused in this unit on the parts of communication that occur within the individual. So thinking in terms of what kinds of things as a person you bring to an interpersonal interaction. And our thinking is that if you can understand better what an individual brings to the interaction, that forms the foundation for understanding what happens when two people communicate with each other. One of the first foundations that you're going to explore in Chapter 2 is your cultural background and the cultural background that you bring to your communication experiences. So what's your nationality? What's your ethnicity? Uh, what's your gender? And how do those aspects of yourself influence the way that you communicate with other people? Um, and even more interestingly, how does it influence communication when two people from different backgrounds come together and try to understand one another, try to um, merge together their ways of communicating? Um, and how does it affect the way that you interpret communication and understand uh, communication episodes uh, based on your cultural background, the way that you were raised, um, and different aspects of your personality. The second chapter in this unit focuses on your self-concept and your identity. If you think about interpersonal communication experiences that you've had, in addition to maybe exchanging information or accomplishing some kind of goal, you also learn a lot about who you are and you take that opportunity to express who you are to the other person. Interpersonal communication is one of the vehicles by which you get feedback about yourself. And understanding how you relate and communicate to other people is one of the ways that you come to understand who you are. But we also express our identity through interpersonal communication. What kinds of things do you have on right now that you're wearing or that you're doing with your, your hair or your body that show who you are as a person? We send out messages about ourselves through communication. And so in a sense, when we talk to other people, it's one of the ways in which we negotiate who we are. If I want Jen to think that I'm smart, I have to try to do smart things. And I can only walk away thinking that I'm smart if Jen sort of accepts that view of myself. She could say, no, Denise, that's really stupid, in which case I can't have that identity. So having an identity requires us to be able to communicate with other people in ways that allow us to express and have affirmed that view of ourselves. And that's what the second chapter in this unit focuses on. And the final chapter in this unit asks you to think about how you perceive interactions with other people. Uh, so when you get into interpersonal communication, what do you notice about the messages that this other person is sending? Uh, do you notice the color of their clothing? Do you notice how they carry themselves? Uh, what parts of the interaction do you pay attention to? Is there something that they said that was particularly noteworthy to you um, or that stuck out in your mind as being really important? Um, and based on what you notice about the interaction, um, what do you remember about it afterward? How do you feel about it after you've left that interaction? If you've gone on a first date and you felt like it was really awkward and they were giving you lots of cues that made you think they weren't interested, how are you going to perceive that interaction or that date um, after you leave? Are you going to think it was horrible and you bombed and you're never going to see the person again? Um, or will you think that it was successful? So what cues do you pay attention to and how do those cues influence how you interpret the interaction? Um, and beyond that, what kinds of attributions do you make about why a person acts a particular way? Or why they behave a particular way during interaction and during conversation? So, um, if Denise is late and she forgets to text me, um, I have some choices about how I can interpret that behavior, right? I can say, well, she didn't text me because she's just rude and always forgets to text me when she's late. Um, or I could attribute her behavior to something totally um, outside of her control. Maybe her train was late, um, she, her cell phone died, right? So based on the things that you pay attention to in interaction, what kinds of explanations do you come up with for why people act the way that they do? So Jen knows that perception and attribution is one of my favorite topics. <laughs> I think that you're going to be challenged in this unit of the book to think about some really basic, automatic, subconscious things that influence your interpersonal communication experiences. We don't think about the effect of culture on our interactions unless we're in a really uh, unique situation where the cultural differences are really pronounced. We don't think about the fact that our self-concept is influencing how we communicate and how we are understanding messages from others. But you take your self-concept into every interaction you have. And something as simple as perception seems like it should be so objective. Obviously, I can see what Jen's wearing, and she's wearing a blue sweater over a white top. What we don't think about is the ways in which 
our reactions to things are really subjective and we often distort what we see in order to have it make sense to us, we protect ourselves in certain ways or because it fits in some general scheme that we have of the world or of this person. So one of the things you're really going to learn about in this, this unit of the book is the ways in which from the very start, the things you notice in an interaction, the way you think about yourself, the culture you bring, you have already started to put your stamp on your interpersonal interaction experiences.